Hi everyone, welcome to Evening TV. I'm Evening Ransom. I have a couple of uh, videos about talking about um, par when parents are estranged from their adult children. I have a video about when the children are, are have turned into narcissists. I have a video about that. And then I have um, a, a couple of videos about just not understanding um, when parents say they don't understand what happened. They just, everything was fine and now they're alienated from their children and they don't know why. I had a lot of suspicion about that. And so I was kind of driving this hard line because I just really could not think of anything that would make that story true. I had found like these groups and these, these podcasts and these uh, YouTube channels about parents being alienated from their kids and, and this sort of victim stance that they're taking. I did want to make a video because about the one circumstance that you know really have come to understand it would make it legitimate and that is that one of the parents has alienated the kids against the other parent. The interesting thing about this is that of these people that I was talking about if that's the case they don't seem to know it because the thing that they're saying is everything is perfect and I just don't know what happened. They're not explaining you know they were their you know other parent talked badly about me and you know smeared me to them and made me have all these, made me have all these doubts about me and blah blah blah. They didn't, they didn't say that. There was one woman in particular that I thought, I thought I saw that maybe that was happening. And th this was like two years ago now and I actually wrote her an email asking her, you know, do you think that possibly your husband, she was still married, they were married, um, had been married quite a long time, they had four kids and all four were uh, alienated and estranged and she seemed like a very sweet person and she didn't have you know she said I don't know why you know there's but she did say that they they fought a lot the parents fought all the time and she also said that he had an okay relationship with them this made me this made my, my, made my you know those were some red flags and I asked her go do you think he could be souring the kids against you and she hit my back but I suspect that might be what's happening in that situation uh, in situations where there's two parents who are together and both alienated, um, I, I'm more suspicious. Yeah, when there's, when there's a divorce situation going on, that seems very likely to happen. These people that I was talking about, none of them said that. None of them, if that was what's happening, they were completely unaware of it. They were completely blaming the kids. I mean, completely blaming the kids. They were not saying that, you know, not blaming an ex, it was nothing like that. They were blaming the kids. You know, maybe a boyfriend or somebody like that turned them against him. But you know, they, you know, most of them, most of them said, "I think I just spoiled my kids. I spoiled them. I treated them too good." And that's mostly how they explained it. This is a really devastating situation, of course, and it is a situation where, yes, you were a perfectly loving parent. You didn't abuse your kids, and you still ended up being alienated and estranged from them. And it's tragic. Things to happen in a lot of the cases is this doesn't last forever. That the kids do eventually grow up and get a little distance and then they're able to start figuring out some things and they're able to start seeing what kind of happened and they're you know they get a little bit more open-minded it's no guarantee that it's gonna fix it but that does seem to happen that does seem to happen if you have little kids that if they if they have a if you have a certain amount of influence over them you know if they really want your approval or they really think you have a way in to really keep the connection with them and they want your approval so much, then your influence can be really strong on them, especially if you're really manipulative. For me, it was a huge blessing that, uh, that this didn't happen to me because I had my, a very manipulative ex who was able to smear at me and get everybody against me. Um, and then, so I had everybody against me and my kids still didn't go against me. And so what I attribute that to is that my kids were the only ones around me. At this point, you know, because I got completely, you know, exiled, <laughs> you know, and so no one was around me. People, if, they, if anyone had been around me, like they were, they would have just seen by the way I live that it wasn't, that none of, nothing he was saying was true because I was, you know, I was the person I was and my kids got to see that. My kids got to see that what they were experiencing in their life with me and with their dad didn't match up to what the story was when they, when it, what everybody said was happening, which was that I was the uh, crazy one and the abusive one and the, the bad parent and that he was supposedly the better parent and all that that wasn't their experience or that even that even that he was 
uh, you know, they were just saying I was I had drug problems, and and I, which they had never ever seen me any kind of any kind of inebriated at all, and they saw their dad drunk all the time, and so that just wasn't it wasn't the experience they were having, and while it was really hard on them, really hard on them, every kid needs to have at least one parent they can count on, right? Needs to have one parent they can count on, and they could count on me, but their dad and their family tried to do their very best to undermine that, to make them doubt me, to be, and make them wor wonder about me. And, you know, ultimately we made it through, but that was certainly hard on them, you know. And it is just such a brutal thing to do. And this is, this is what we know. This is why we know that, you know, narcissistic people, sociopathic people who don't have enough empathy and don't have a conscience and, and just want to win at all costs and will lie and, you know, cheat and all that stuff, just do not have the ability to put their children's needs first. And it doesn't matter if you never even did anything to them. They just want to win. And the kids are the ultimate prize. The kids are the ultimate prize. They don't want the kids. They just want you not to get the kids. They just want, they just want to turn everybody against you. And the kids might be the last ones left. They were in my case. You know, they were in my case. And basically, this is a scenario where I'm just saying yes, uh, that could have happened and it could it could have lasted all the way into adulthood and so if you are now dealing with alienated children or estranged children that are adults and it went all the way back to a time when they were under the influence of the other parent you know that's a really tough situation and but what I would do what I would do if it was me is I would never give up I would never stop trying I would never stop trying to reach out to those kids. I would do it. Uh, I would do it completely selflessly. Not do not do any no kind of guilt. Do not put any guilt on it. Do not say you know it was Mother's Day and you didn't call me. You know don't don't do that. Just completely selflessly reach out to them. Don't stop sending them birthday cards. Don't stop sending them Christmas cards. Don't stop um, you know letting them know you love them. You just consistently do that. Not expecting anything back. Don't expect anything back and just do that and keep doing that and be consistent with that and you and you also consistently just be a good person you be a good person a compassionate person you keep your word you tell the truth you're kind to people you're you're just none of the things that they say you are and they your kids as long as they are as long as they are develop develop people and they've developed compassion and they haven't become narcissists themselves if they become narcissists themselves, then all bets are off because, you know, who knows the way that's going to man manifest and you really don't need, as, as brutal as it is to say, you don't need any more narcissists in your life, even if it is your kid. So I'm really, if that's the case, I'm really sorry that that happened. I'm sorry that they got them away from you so that you didn't have enough influence to make sure that didn't happen. So, you know, that's a terrible situation. But I'm assuming, yeah, let's assume, let's assume that's not the case. Let's assume that they're, you know, decent or, or an order people with empathy and with a conscience and with all of that and they've just been soured against you with lies or maybe even they've been soured against you with some of the truth you know we can go ahead and admit that we weren't perfect parents we made mistakes too and maybe the other parents just you know m you know try to really capitalize on those few mistakes and you know made you look you know really bad but those mistakes are really an opportunity to be humble and to be human and to, you know, lay yourself out there and ask for forgiveness and say, yes, I made mistakes, I did, you know, I, you know, I've done that, I've done that too. That, and I apologize because that's also something that the narcissistic parent is never going to do. They're never going to see that. They're going to see that as a huge contrast from what, they're, what they've ever seen over there. So you just be a really good example of what a healthy, compassionate human being is like, what a wonderful mother or father is like, and just consistently do that and expect nothing in return and be oh so grateful and oh so appreciative when you do get something in return. And here's the thing, here's what I know. What I know is that we all innately want connection and we all innately want to be loved by our parents. We don't want to believe that our parents are terrible people that don't love us if we have any way not to believe that. So you give your kids lots of reasons to know that you love them, to know that you're a good person, they came from a good person and that you have their interests at heart and you always have. 
even if you made mistakes in the past, you still never stop loving them. And you just keep doing that. And, you know, just be careful not to make it about guilt. Be careful not to make it about you being, you being pitiful or you being, you needing sympathy or you being sick or you, anything you need. Make it not about your needs at all. Make it completely about their needs and about you being a really good person that they would, they would benefit from knowing. That, that's, that's the best advice I can give. And, and, um, and I do, you know, I do want to say that, you know, with the other videos that I have where I'm really, really questioning why parents would be estranged from their kids if it wasn't their fault, that this is the one thing that I can, I can come up with that explains that away. If this is a situation that you know about where these kids, you're still alienated and the kids are getting up there to like, in their, you know, close to 30 maybe and have kids, like if they're getting really into adulthood um, and still haven't kind of come around, I'd like to know about that. I think that this is probably pretty common in, for sure younger than 18 and probably all the way up to, you know, middle 20s. But I'm guessing that it doesn't last forever. If you have a loving mother out there or a loving father out there, you need that person in your life, you know? And so, you know, most of us don't turn away from a parent if we, unless we really have to. We really want to have our parents in our lives. So, okay, you guys, thanks so much. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.